What's up, everybody? It's Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. We go live today. Let's see how this goes. Not really announced. Got three independent bottles that I've been meaning to review for a while. I plan to give them each a mark as well. So, like I said, we'll see how that goes. Hello, hello. How's it going, guys? All right, so over here on my left, I have a single malt of Scotland, Mortlock 22, bottled at 54.2%. All of these are cast strength. All right, going to give that one a mark. I got what's left of a North Star Vega, 28-year-old. This one's... 46.7%, going to give this one a mark as well. And then, last but not least, Single Malts of Scotland, Klein Leash. This one's 24 years old, all right? And 52.2%. So all these are cast strength. Even the Vega, that's only 46.7%, is cast strength. Going to give each of them a mark. These two are Single Malts, the Mortlock and the Klein Leash. Um, and the Vega is a blend. It's a blended malt, to be exact, but all of them are scotch. All right. Uh, like I said, I'm going to give each of these a mark. Welcome to my friends. I'm not sure who's in the chat. I don't see anybody talking just yet. Peter White's up. Surprise live. Yeah, I'm going to try to go every Sunday if I can. Uh, I'm going to try to go around 9 o'clock every Sunday. Um, I might have to adjust that. I can't commit to a day just because of the way – the schedule has been going with uh, work and all these different things. Um, not knowing what time the kids are going to be in bed. Lots on the plate, but I'm going to try my best to do one live a week if I can. And hopefully, hopefully I can do them on Sunday, Sunday nights to be exact. Go Habs is in the house. What's going on, buddy? Your Habs are doing well so far. Um might be the best team in the division, believe it or not. I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, so, again, single malts of Scotland, Mortlock 22. All right, this one is 54.2%. North Star Vega, 28-year-old, 50, sorry, 46.7%. All right, that's a 28-year-old. Got a little bit left of this one. We got BMO in the house. We got Richard... In the house. What's going on, guys? And we got Klein Leash, 24-year-old, uh, also from Single Malts of Scotland. All right. This one was a Kensington Wine Market exclusive. All right. Selected by the Kensington Wine Market. All right. Um, yeah. RIP George Armstrong. Definitely. Um, Go Habs is saying a great start for Habs. Yeah, it has been. It's very they're they're an impressive team. Um, not gonna lie, they work really well as a team, and they're motivated. And that's one two things that I don't think the Leafs have right now, uh, despite all the skill on their roster. But tonight's not about hockey. Uh, we're gonna go through these three Scotch whiskeys and give them a mark because I've been meaning to do that for a while. Um, I think I have these organized based on what I like best, but the review is what matters. So I'm going to start over here with the Mortlock. Like I said, 54.2%, 22 years old, Sherry Cask. How many bottles? Let's see if they say it here. Let's not say it on this. Perhaps on the box. Does not say it on the box. So we do not know how many bottles of this Mortlock. Yeah, hopefully this Mortlock got better, like Peter White said. It was pretty rough the last time I tried it. Dribs and drabs in the house. What's going on, buddy? The nose still has that characteristic I only find in Sherry Cask. Um, but it's very mild. Although the last time I tried this, it picked up as the night went. <clears throat> yeah, maybe go Habs. I'm not sure, buddy. You're right, though. It's something for sure. Um, all right. 
So mostly nice notes on the nose here. Every once in a while, I catch that note that I don't like. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know what that note is. It's just, I don't know. But much improvement on the nose for sure. Mostly nice stuff. Yeah, uh, the, the clan leash is excellent. Really sweet arrival. You know what? It's too bad because I know a lot of people love this. But it has a little bit of that note. Not much at all. And I guarantee you I'm going to share this with my friends and they're going to be like, you're crazy. I don't taste anything. It's there though. But much better. Much, much better. I don't know if something was off with my palate the last time I tried this on a live. <clears throat> it's definitely much better tonight. And it definitely has a lot less of that note. Definitely almost gone on the nose, if at all. Easy to drink at cast strength. 22 years old. It's opened up a lot. I was ready to give this like a 78 tonight, to be honest with you. It's changing my mind, so I'm going to come back to that. <clears throat> Over here to the Vega 28-year-old. Uh, as you can see, I've had this bottle for a very long time. I haven't gotten around to reviewing it just yet. Christopher Molly in the house. What's going on? Uh, Malloy, sorry. I, I, I still make that mistake. I think I need glasses. I'm actually going to get um, checked. My eyes checked this week to see if I need glasses. I think it's about that time. Squinting a lot. P Boss in the house. What's going on, brother? So, this Vega is as good as I remember it. The nose is beautiful. Forty-six point seven percent. It's a blended malt, uh, distilled in September of nineteen ninety, bottled in February of twenty nineteen. This is one of eight hundred bottles, so very very limited. Um, and what I'll do is I'm gonna throw a dram from this. I think I might have two drams left. I'm gonna throw a dram from this in my um, mystery drams in my uh, Sixer Crew mystery drams on Patreon. It's a good month, actually, for that. There's the Springbank 17 in there. There's a 51-year-old cognac, or almost 51-year-old cognac. Good month for the Sixer crew. Peter White saying the Mortlock scores really high on Whiskey Base. Um, <laughs> Christopher, uh, it, it happens mostly to me for some reason. I'm not sure why. Go Habs is asking, are whiskey supplies low across Canada? The SAQ uh, has squat. The LCBO has squat as well. Uh, Peter White's actually confirming that right there. Uh, LCBO is so bad that I emailed them to ask them what the hell is going on. <laughs> yeah, it's been really bad. Okay. So... This Vega, North Star, 28-year-old, 46.1%. That's cash rank, believe it or not. I'm going to give this one an 88. Good stuff for sure. Kevin's in the house. What's going on, Kevin? Um, I just threw a dram of this Vega in the mystery drams for this month. You might be the lucky guy that gets it. You are one of my members uh, for the Sixer crew on Patreon. Moving on to the Clan Leash Distillery, 24-year-old. Um, its uh, cast type is a hogshead, 185 bottles. I tried to get a backup of this. I could not find it. It went pretty quick at Kensington. 52.2% uh, uh, ABV. And I'm going to throw a dram of this 
as well in the Sixer Crew Mystery Drams. Um, so it's kind of partially blind, but not entirely blind. Um, you know what I reviewed that month, so you know that you're going to get something from what I reviewed that month. This month, there's a bunch of stuff that's going to be in that. So, so when I first opened this bottle, I was scared because it was super, super, super piney, almost like uh, taking a whiff of like a pine tree. <clears throat> very up close uh, but it went from that super piney note into this really nice um klein leash style like the the distillery characteristic really shines through now and it didn't take long it was about a week couple weeks in uh open and it was fine beautiful bubblegum note in there as well Some like hay-like notes, like um, hay bale kind of notes. Wow, this one's beautiful. Nice sweetness to it on the nose. Mm. Really nice saltiness. No peat whatsoever. Lemony notes. <clears throat> that Klein Leash characteristic really kicks through here. James, what's going on, buddy? Nice to see you in the in the chat tonight. It's a surprise live. These are a little quieter usually. Didn't announce it. Uh, Jeremy and I have a huge announcement coming up for our podcast. Uh, I haven't discussed it with him yet, so I'm not – or. I haven't discussed sharing it with him yet, but I coordinated with, um, it's a big surprise. I'm not going to give you any more details, uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So it's not going to be the podcast that comes out next, but it'll be the podcast that comes out right after that. Yeah. Yeah. That clan leash is awesome. It actually even improves a touch with a drop of water. Gets a little bit sweeter. But at cast strength, you can drink this all day. 52.2%. Um, going to have to give this one a 90. Really, really good stuff. Really like this clan leash. This one was uh, bottled on Halloween in 1995. Sorry, it was distilled in on Halloween in 1995 and then bottled uh, January 10th, 2020. So, 24 years old. A little older than 24. <laughs> Arm wrestling. Uh, I don't think Jeremy wants to do that. Getting married. <laughs> it's offside. Go ahead, it's not very nice. Yeah, that's easily a 90. I might be being a bit stingy, and that's only because when I first cracked this bottle, I was really worried. That's engraved in my head, that pine note, but it's gone now. So... Uh, it's a 90, could be even better. I'm not sure what the score is on Whiskey Base, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's up there. Um, really good. Going to go back to this Mortlock. Just going to take a sip of water and give that one a mark as well. Bimo saying, I hope you're getting a mail order whiskey business going. I don't know what that means. I'm uh, I'm gifting I'm gifting uh, my friends some whiskey once in a while, but that's about it. So there's definitely some nice sherry to this one. Small, small, small hint of the note I don't like. Uh, which will not be described. But it's not even, 
It's not even that. It's like more like a sour wood than that note that I don't like anymore anyway. And again, yeah, it's that sour woods there on the on the palate as well. But then there's a really nice sherry influence to this whiskey, really nice notes of sherry for this whiskey. Um, so I'm going to have to say this, this has improved for me quite a bit. I'm going to give it an 85. And I think people are still going to look at that and think that that's a, a bad mark for this, even though they probably love it. It's the Mortlock 22 from uh, the single malt, the single malts of Scotland independent bottler. <clears throat> I think a lot of people really love this bottle, but I can't get over that note. And to me, it just it spells out uh, not the best sherry cask. So although it's great whiskey, um, 85 is as high as I can go for that one because it has a note that it's just not for me. It might be for other people. Might Other people might love it. I just don't. I can't. I can't get around it. Um, Cars and Cubes in the house saying, hey, Rob and everyone else, uh, who's dropping in? Nobody today. Uh, just me. I'm going to be reviewing. I, I just finished reviewing all three of these. If you're just joining us, I gave this Mortlock 22 from the Single Malts of Scotland a 85. That's That one's cast strength. I gave this North Star Vega 28-year-old uh, blended malt a 88. But I think a lot of people would probably score that higher than I did. And then I gave this Klein Leash Distillery 24-year-old cast strength as well. Only 180 bottles, uh, 185 bottles, and a 90. So those are the three scores right there. Uh, Eric Waite, Whiskey Studies in the house. What's going on, Eric? How are you doing, buddy? Um, saying, hello, Mr. Flannel Shirt. <laughs> What's going on, man? He says, I've got nice flannels, but everyone uh, cranks... Everyone cranks up indoor heating too much, so I wear a T-shirt and a hoodie. Yeah. Um, where you're from, it's a lot warmer than when I'm where I'm from, so flannel works quite nice in uh, minus 5 degree weather, uh, degree Celsius, I should say. Rob, did you pick up the Game of Thrones Morlock any good? Uh, that was the only Game of Thrones whiskey I did not review, uh, aside from the two newer Johnny Walkers, the one with the dragon, the one with the wolf. I avoided those ones because uh, the show really disappointed me. The season finale, the series finale, I should say. Uh, so I decided not to buy any more Game of Thrones stuff. Um, Scotch Comics saying, Rob, not a Bills fan. Actually, my brothers are all, all, three, all three of them are all Bills fans. And if the game's on right now, that's definitely what they're doing. Um, I'm not the biggest football guy. I, I like, I'm a hockey guy. Used to love soccer. I used to love football too. Uh, but eventually you got to kind of uh, pick and choose where you go with your time. Uh, I focus, if I'm watching sports, it's going to be hockey or MMA or boxing. Uh, in touch mortgages, uh, mortgage solutions, my boy, Anthony dropping a super chat. Thanks so much, man. You didn't have to do that. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you very, very much. This guy is uh, skyrocketing his whiskey journey. He's come a long way since since I met him. Um, but, I mean, he was well into the spirits uh, before I met him. So he knew a thing or two. Um, and he's doing a really, really fast-paced uh, palate evolution, I guess we can call it. Go Habs is saying that it's minus 15 celsius in montreal yeah it always seems to be a little colder there than here i missed a few people talking earlier i think um, i apologize guys i look i have add i think so i look away for two seconds and then i missed pretty much everything that uh popped up indian got saying uh whiskey in the six what soccer teams uh team do you support um when I was big into soccer, I used to play soccer uh, before I blew my knee and then could never play soccer again. Um, I was a big Lazio fan um, for Serie A, but 
uh, those days are over. I don't follow really, to be honest with you. Um, if I have to go for somebody, I'm going for Toronto FC just because they're from Toronto. Um, but MLS sucks. So it's, yeah. Uh, Scott's coming saying TFC, TFC, TFC. Yeah. If I got to go for, if I have to go for somebody, I'm going for TFC. Um, Scotch comic is also saying good win for the Leafs today. Yeah, I think they played better today for sure. I was happy with the performance. Jay Weeks in the chat. What's going on, man? <clears throat> um, so if you're just joining us now, there's a few more people in the chat than there were before. I reviewed the Mortlock 22 from the Single Malts of Scotland. We get a better look at that bottle. Hopefully it focuses in a little bit more. Uh, sorry about the glare, guys. Um, working on getting new technology for this channel. So I got the Yeti over here. Um, got some stuff that's helping me computer. Got a phone on the way to record my regular reviews. But I definitely have to work on um, my lives and my podcast camera just because of uh, I don't like the, I don't like the saturation of light uh, with this camera. Uh, so I also reviewed this Vega 28. Sorry, the Mortlock was an 85. The Vega 28 was an 88. And this Klein leash right here, also from Single Malts of Scotland, uh, 90. All right. So um, just so you guys understand there's an element to the Morlock that I personally can't get around, but I know that a lot of people love this whiskey. So if you have it, haven't opened it, look up other people's reviews. I highly recommend you check out the whiskey based scores because um, if other people that are more in line with more in line with your palate uh, really enjoy this, then then maybe trust them because I think a lot of people will love this whiskey that just, it has this note to it that I, for whatever reason, um, cannot get around. <clears throat> Kevin is saying, uh, I haven't found, or I haven't followed soccer in a long time, but I'm, but I will always be a man. You tater <laughs> right on. And they said, uh, I'm super disappointed with the Morlock review. I bought a bottle, but haven't opened it. Um, too bad. Okay, so then I, I don't know if you wrote that before you heard what I just said, but um, Kevin, you know what? Um, I'm going to pay attention to your mystery drams uh, this month because I'll throw you a sample before you open your bottle. I'll let you try this so that so that you know whether or not you like it enough to open that bottle. <clears throat> More like 22 is an 89, 127 volts on whiskey base. Yeah. So there you go. Like whiskey base usually doesn't lie. And for it to be an 89, that's, that's high with 127 volts. It just has a note that I can't get around, but I'm sure a lot of people can because they love it. 89 is a good score on whiskey base. Now this clan leash, on the other hand, I feel like I was too stingy giving it a 90, to be honest. It might actually be better than what I scored it. I think all three of these might be better than what I scored them. Uh, Cars and Cube says, <clears throat> I enjoyed the clan leash, uh, got 50% off, <clears throat> got 50% off. Yeah, the clan leash I thought was really good from the, Game of Thrones series. Peter White saying that he'll take this Mortlock. <laughs> no problem, man. I'll let you have some. <clears throat> so 36 people in the chat. We got DJ Cammy coming at me with a question. He said, watch your Mortlock 16 review considering picking up a bottle. Thoughts? Question mark. Uh, same notes that you're mentioning here. No. So that Mortlock 16, any other Mortlock I've had does not have the note that I, I despise. And this one barely has it, but even the smallest hint of it brings back bad memories. Uh, so this one slightly has it. There's other whiskeys that people have loved. Another example, um, 
is the Bunnahabin 14 year old PX um, that came out probably about four years ago or three years ago. A lot of most people absolutely adored that whiskey. I was one of the few that just couldn't enjoy it because a while back I had this Deanston 20. Um, and I don't know if all Deanston 20 bottles have this taste, but this one particular, this one in particular had it and I can't do it. It's like an ammonia um, sour note that I just, I can't, I can't get around. Uh, some people um, chalk it up to being sulfur. I don't think it's sulfur. I think it's something else. Uh, I think it's maybe the sherry cask is too young or perhaps um, went bad or something in there went bad. Uh, Peter White said, Deanston 20 was brutal for campus. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the note. That's the note. Um, and I, I catch it in other whiskeys, um, but it's not quite as like pea like as the Deanston is um, in other bottles. Like this is definitely not approaching that kind of note but it's like just a hint of ammonia all right uh is saying is a shelter point rundown coming soon or did i miss it yeah it's definitely coming soon uh i got four here i'm waiting for um one more i'm gonna borrow from my buddy actually he was in the chat earlier i'm not sure if he still is I'm going to borrow his double cask, which was actually really cool. Uh, so Shelter Point does a double cask. It's 50%. Um, it's aged in, or it's finished very quickly, a short finish in, uh, I think, blueberry or berry brandy. Berry brandy, if I'm not mistaken. Berry wine, berry wine. So it's a berry wine cask, and they finish their Shelter Point um, in that. <laughs> in touch mortgage is saying it's all yours buddy um thanks buddy so i want to do that one and i want to do that side by side with these four in a rundown and that's going to be coming soon okay uh, honestly like if you haven't bought a shelter point and you're waiting to start with this artisanal single malt whiskey it's 46 percent. it's the most ridiculously approachable whiskey you can find honestly Email the distillery if they don't ship to you. I'm sure they'll find a way. You will find a way. The artisanal single malt, 46%, worth every penny. But all of them, honestly, all of them are excellent. I haven't had a whiskey um, I don't love from Shelter Point. And that's, I think, pretty a pretty bold statement, in my opinion. Oh, it's Pinot Noir finish for uh, 365 days, 335 days. Interesting. I thought it was uh, a berry wine uh, finish. I don't know where I read that. I don't know. Okay, so it's Pinot, Pinot Noir then. But either way, it's good, really good. I got a chance to try it um, about a week and a half ago, and I loved it. This Vega is really good too. I feel like I should change the mark on that one. <clears throat> I, yeah, I'm going to leave it the same just because it's, it's taken me a very long time to do the review. And that really means to me that I wasn't excited enough to do the review. Um, so because of that, I got to leave it at 88, although it's drinking really, really nice. Indian got is saying, is Rob going for the Ralphie look? <laughs> um, you need to get a magnifying glass. I know I need the steampunk magnifying glass. Um, Ralphie's a man. Uh, if that's the look I'm going for, then sure, why not? I'll take it. I'll take it. Ralphie's a good guy. Uh, Eric Waite, Whiskey Studies, saying, I'm not seeing Shelter Point available around here. Yeah, so it's... Probably not going to be for some time, Eric. Um, email uh, the distillery directly. Email um, someone at the distillery directly, and they might be able to help you out. Um, tell them Rob sent you. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to help your chances or worsen them, but hopefully it helps. 
Uh, number five double barrel is blackberry. Um, yeah, so it's blackberry, blackberry wine, right? I, I think I think um, in touch mortgages, Anthony. Uh, double check, double check your bottle. Uh, re, uh, let me know if it's blackberry wine or if it's because I'm pretty sure the one that you had was blackberry wine as well, but I could be wrong. You you have it, so you know better. How are we doing for time over here? 9.30. Got a couple more minutes. <clears throat> he's sending me a pic. All right, so I trust him. Then he's confirming that he's looking at the bottle right now. So his bottle is different. Um, maybe the double... I guess since uh, Cars and Cubes is suggesting that that's uh, number five double barrel, that every batch has been different, maybe. Uh, I'm going to look at this picture right now. Finished for 335 days in uh, Quail's Gate uh, Pinot Noir casks. Flip to the back. I'm curious if there is... Um, a, a different wine cask influence because it is a double barrel, right? So it's called double barreled. So I wonder. And he flipped to the back. That was instant. Ed. You're you're on the ball tonight. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it's just for his his batch. It's the twenty oh bottled in 2019. So I don't know which batch this is in particular, or maybe it said it in the first side. Uh, nope. But <clears throat> bottled in 2019. So this one was Pinot Noir casks. Interesting. Did, did, did not drink like Pinot Noir in my opinion. Yeah, Kevin's saying he clearly needs to get in on the shelter point. At some point, they're going to be available for mystery drams, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> um, in touch mortgage is saying that he's enjoying this whatever it is honestly i like i said i haven't had a bad shelter point they're all good um this one is really interesting <clears throat> i assume that it was single malt I, it's the artist artisanal cast drank whiskey so i just assumed that this one was the artisanal single malt whiskey um just that cast strength but I was definitely wrong because the single malt is obviously single malt. This one is a combination of uh, single single grain barley and rye. So I had no idea. Actually, I'm assuming that single grain barley could actually be corn. Um, but there's something special about Shelter Point. I'm actually going to dive a little bit into two brewers as well because I haven't had uh, any two brewers yet and i need to uh, really great things kevin is dropping a super chat saying good to see everyone on tonight thanks buddy i really appreciate the super chat um <clears throat> thanks kevin eric way is saying i've yet to have a pinot noir cask or pinot cask a whiskey that said to me i was asian pinot noir they tend to be more of a general red wine character. And if peated, I get chocolate covered uh, cherries. Interesting. Yeah, I think there's no way I would be able to determine what wine cask um, a whiskey was aged in unless it was sherry. I think the only one that I, or, or port actually, I should say that, but those are both fortified. Um, anything non fortified, I don't think I would have any chance figuring out what those were. 
in touch more mortgages is saying uh with a drop of water it has a very very note but the wine is pinot noir uh can produce the nuance yeah yeah true that's actually a good point so pinot noir is known to have berry like uh flavors i'm not sure where oh i guess because i read in the past that they've used um berry wines maybe that's why i've um just assumed that your cask was Stephen Connor in the house. What's going on, buddy? It's late for you, isn't it? I thought it was. Uh, thought it was late. Six gin and rock and roll in the house. Um, Brother Channel Two whiskey in the six guys. If you haven't checked out Six Gin and Rock and Roll yet, you really, really need to. Uh, Monty's doing some incredible things. Um, he just started his channel. There's probably four or five, four I think reviews up on the channel. He's also on Instagram, so you can follow him there as well. He's giving a bit of everything. He's giving some indie rock or indie music anyway. Um, he's giving an awesome gin review. And then he's also giving you some cocktail options. So check out his channel, Six Gin and Rock and Roll. <clears throat> yeah, Eric's saying definitely the fortified wines are easier to determine. I agree. Dribs and Drams is saying... In in my whiskey hall that's currently trapped in Calgary, there is a 50 milliliter shelter point smoke point. That's I, that's actually one of the ones that I really want to track down. Looking forward to trying it. If I didn't spend so much money on Springbank in December, uh, the end of December, I probably would have bought the smoke point. But I haven't bought it just because I've had too much on the go lately. So I need to settle down a little bit. Stephen Connor saying, what's the single malts of Scotland? Okay. So for those of you that are just joining, there's actually four of you guys now. Mortlock, 22 year old cast strength, um, single malts of Scotland, independent bottler. I gave this one an 85. Although I do understand that many will like this one a lot better than I do. The North Star Vega 28, I give this one an 88. And the Single Malts of Scotland Klein Leash 24, I gave a 90. And to the credit of all these bottles, I think I probably was a little stingy on all three. Um, but <laughs> love you too, buddy. Woo Woo is saying, I didn't even want to. Okay. Yeah. That's why you don't read everything that's on the teleprompter. Where am I? Where am I? Um, where's my maintenance crew when you need them? All right. Um, Cars and Cubes is saying, the smoke point. Two is delicious, but like you said, all Shelter Point has been great so far. Yeah, honestly, I love them. <clears throat> so Indian God is asking if I got the Springbank 18. That's literally um, the only one I did not get in 2020. Uh, I got the 10, the 15, uh, the 10, the 12, the 15, the 17, the 21, and I reviewed the 25. Halfway through, I think, uh, 2020, um, which was a big disappointment for a disappointment for me personally. But um, I reviewed the 25 as well. So, and I also got the Kilcarran heavily peated and the the Hazel Burn uh, 13. So those will be coming up shortly. Actually, Jeremy and I review the Kilcarran heavily peated in our upcoming podcast, which should be out Tuesday or maybe a little bit later this week. Um, so that's coming out this week. Yeah, and uh, to add to Monty's many talents, he also does, like, on my my regular reviews, he also does all the music for this channel. He did the intro uh, to this channel. He's done the um, music that's playing while I'm reviewing something. And then he also does the outro. Uh, he produced the music uh, that I wrote lyrics to 
um, in one of the songs that's in the outro, um, I can't remember which video or which videos. I think there was a couple of them that he put it on. So um, if you have a listen, you might recognize the voice. Uh, Gary Kay saying that he has a great single malt of Scotland, 14-year-old cast strength Jake. I'm sure that's incredible. Um, Jibs and Jan is saying, uh, the music for my channel is me using loops and playing bass. And uh, I don't know that instrument. Uh, Bodrin. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, yeah, cool. So again, Mordlock was 85, Vega was a 80, 88, and the Clan Leash was a 90. Um, I'll probably just finish. Well, I should, I should definitely try to finish this Mordlock. Yeah, it's got that note. I, I don't know. I, I can't get over that note. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, all right, so a couple things to look out for in the next little while before I sign out. Uh, Jeremy and I have a podcast coming up this week. We focus on the LCBO and we focus on the disaster of a lottery that they put together for BTAC. Uh, for some reason, Ardbeg's on there, and for some reason, there's some Bowmore on there as well. Um, we get into detail about that. We also, in that podcast, review the Kilcare and Heavily Peated. So if you're interested in that bottle, it's batch three and batch one. He has the batch one. I have the batch three. We review that bottle. Um, after that, I have a video coming out, top 10 whiskeys under 50 bucks. Um, and I focus a little bit, or I focus on the LCBO in particular. So check that one out if you have a chance. And then we have a big surprise coming up on the podcast, but I'm not allowed to share. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to share, actually, but I, I don't want to share just yet. It's a big surprise. I think you guys will love it. Um, so stay tuned because not the next release, but the release after that will be, mark my words, the best podcast we put out. That's it for me, guys. Um, hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you guys are all staying safe. And I plan to do this every Sunday, um, but we'll see. We'll see what uh, time restraints look like. But hopefully uh, next Sunday at 9 o'clock, I will see you all again. Cheers, everybody.